Okay, good afternoon, YouTube. So I got this eBox Wi-Fi unit uh, switched over to log into my local Wi-Fi network. So that's what they call station mode. So there's two modes that you can run in. And this one's called station mode. It comes in AP, which is access point mode. There's also this access point plus station mode, which... I tried and it doesn't seem to work as well. The Wi-Fi output seems to be lower in that mode. Additionally, there's no benefit to that mode because the Android application doesn't work unless you're in the default access point mode. If you change the IP address of the Wi-Fi adapter, the app doesn't connect anymore. So I stayed in station mode. So this is the web browser and I set this device in my modem. I set it to be a static IP and I'll tell you why later. That way I don't have to change the IP address on the device. I just go on to my modem and set it to a static IP address. I'm using Google Chrome on my Windows machine and I've set it up to translate the page. So, like you see, it translates all of the text on the screen into English or whatever language you want. That doesn't seem to work when you're connected to it in access point mode. So anyway, I was going to step through the uh, messages here. So you can see this is where I have it configured now. There's the uh, default IP address. And then if you come over here, here's the mode setting. So this is what you'll see on the uh, tablet. This didn't translate this time. But then if I go into my station settings, this is where you set up all your network settings here's the access point settings you really don't need to fool with that this is the one you do need to change one thing here so this is what's called the other settings so this is the rs485 serial port settings and these are default so you want to keep these the same and then down here you want to run as a tcp server and then take note of this port 8088 you'll need that later you can't change the server address so that's why you have to set it to a static ip on your own network and then this tcp timeout i changed it from the default 300 up to 600 and that's per the notes that Adam Welch had in his video. And so you change that from 300 to 600, you click save. Now Adam used this program called HWVSP. I tried that one, I had a few issues with it. So I tried this one, I'll put a link to both of those in the video description, but I tried this NetBurner virtual COM port. What I did was I set up a client. The Wi-Fi adapter is the server. This is the client. I gave it a name. I assigned it to a COM port, create the virtual COM port. And then here I put my static IP address that I assigned the unit to. And then here's the port number 8088 that was on the device. You create that port and it It'll say COM9 virtual port, it was created. And if I do a refresh now, I've been connected, I've sent, I guess, 10,000 bytes and I've received back 30,000 bytes. What's receiving that data, this is the EP Ever Solar Station Monitor Program. I showed you this in an earlier video when I was running Hardwired. And so now I've got my COM9. I have my device here. I set up the controller, my battery, my arrays, and then all of this station information. And then I connected to that. So you've got all of your system information. I've got my array current voltage power. I've got my battery. There's the voltage, temperature, current. There's my load current down below. You've got all of the charting or graphing information. So this is the real time 
I can look at the voltage over the day. So here was my load or battery voltage. They're both the same. I guess the blue is over the top of the green. And then the red is my solar panel voltage. It was kind of cloudy this morning, so there was a lot of up and downs. And then here's my current. So you can see I was pulling current out of the battery. Here's zero. I was pulling current out. And then I've been gradually putting current back. The array current here and then my load. I've had a 10 amp load come on and then a 20 amp load. And that was switching on and off. And then down below here, I do get some timeouts. I suspect that has to do with the distance between the Wi-Fi adapter and my Wi-Fi access point. So I'm going to be moving my access point a little bit closer. So I'm hoping that these timeouts go away. They're, they're better than they were. I've been playing around with orienting and locating the Wi-Fi adapter. So... I'm still getting a few little errors, but they seem to work. Okay, so what I have, these are my two loads on the solar charge controller. So what I'm going to do is I will turn that one off right now. And I'll turn this off to keep it off. And let's go back and look at the monitor. I have it set up to poll every 60 seconds, so we might have to wait a little bit here. So what we should see is this blue line should drop down from about 20 amps down to 10 amps. Okay, so you can see now all of a sudden the battery current has started to go up. Looks like we didn't catch the load turning off though. Let's wait another 60 seconds, I guess. But you can see now the blue line has dropped. That's my load. And the green line is the battery charging which went up so here's the power and in fact you can see now the solar panel output the red line has dropped because now there's not as much load on the system so i imagine the voltage will have gone back up went up over 30 volts but yeah there we go so you can see this is live okay so yeah that's the uh, load off now what i'm going to do is i'll turn the my switch back on there. Well, I'll just turn it on manually. It probably turn on in a minute or so. Let's go back and watch the solar a little bit. There you can see the blue jumped up, the green dropped down, and then the array power or array current went up a little bit. So yeah, we're peaking out about uh, Pretty close to 300 watts and then we've got about 250 watts of load power we should be able to see that up here so we've got 264 on the array right there and we've got load 253 but there you go that's the ebox wi-fi 01 serial port to ethernet convert module so yeah that's working quite well i'm I'm pretty happy with that. You don't have to have that long Ethernet cable running from the charge controller into your PC. You can just do it all wirelessly. And it's also nice. There's no separate power supply for this module. It is powered right off of the RS-485 signals out of the charge controller. So I think that makes a pretty nice uh, setup. Just wanted to show a different serial port program. So this is the NetBurner Virtual Com port. And I'm running the version 2.1. Big shout out to Adam Welch for finding that unit. And I'll put a link to his video as well as the source where I purchased the unit from. And then I'll put links to the EP Ever solar monitor program as well as the two virtual serial port programs that I've tried. That was kind of what I was looking for, some way to get that uh, serial port data from the charge controller back to some place where I can do something with it. So yeah, if you have any questions about how that was set up, post up in the comment section below the video description. And as always, thanks for watching.